finishing off the last four rows will complete this BizLight template. The only new feature in this section is the download button. For the logos in row 6 and the social media icons in row 8, I used UIKit's ability to create a grid from an unordered list. That makes the layout of those images very easy. This is the code for row 6. I just added sample text in that left column and used an H3 element for the heading with an icon using that icon heading class I created earlier and setting it to the medium width. Another heading there for that column. And here's the list that I used to lay out the logos. The width classes are added to the UL element. I'll display two across for smalls and three across for medium and large. Each list item contains a single image. Here are the headers with their icons, the sample text, and the logos, showing three across at the large width. Remaining at three across for the medium. and dropping to two across at the small size. Row eight was the one that had the five narrow columns. In the first four, I've just added some sample text. The fifth column has six social media icons using a list grid, just like I did for the client logos. These will also display three across at medium and large and two across at small, each of the icons in its own list item. I really like this way of creating a grid. It's fast and easy. The data UK grid margin attribute provides some spacing around each of the items when the columns begin to resize and collapse. The last row is very basic, split into two columns, 70% and 30%, and a link to the template, and I repeated the logo in the bottom right corner. So here we see the four columns, the six social media icons, the text link, and the logo repeated. Now back to row seven of the design, where we have a column of text on the left and a button on the right. I used UIKit's panel to set the text off in that left column. Now I need to add the download button in the right column. UIKit buttons are easy to create using a button or link element. Here I've used a link tag you need to add a class of UK button. The UK button primary class gives the button the color and the hover styling for the primary color as defined by your theme. There are four button sizes, UK button mini, button small, or button large, as I've used here. The default size is used if you don't specify a size class. That would create a medium size button between the small and the large. There we see the download button in the primary color. I'll add a space to separate that from the icon. You can create several buttons in a group. Just add a div with a class of UK button group and insert your buttons inside that div. I added a class of UK margin as well to give a little spacing. Here I've given each button a different color using the success, primary, and danger classes. So on each link element, each gets a class of UK button, and you can use the optional classes that provide those colors.
You can also create buttons that have a drop down list. First, create a div which gets the class UK button drop down. Add the data attribute data UK drop down. You can control whether the drop down list is activated on hover or on click. Here I've added the property mode click which means it will drop down when I click the button. If you want it to activate on hover, you can just remove that property altogether and just use the attribute. Add a button element. Here I've used button with a class of UK button and given it the UK button primary styling with an icon after the text. The drop-down list is created next. This is the content that will display when you click or hover the button. You start with a div with the class UK drop-down. This drop-down small class keeps the text inside the drop-down from wrapping to another line. Next, add a list with the classes UK nav and UK nav drop-down. Finally, inside that, add the list items that become the options that appear in the dropdown. And remember, I set this to open on click. So I can hover and the list does not appear. When I click it, we see the list. And notice that this longer item, the list width has expanded to keep that all on a single line. A final step when I finish a page is to check the display at all three widths and make adjustments as needed. You may not want to display everything at the mobile width that you show on a desktop display. As one last example, I'll display a different button at each size. Here is my button column and the three different types of buttons that I added there. I'll display the single button at the small size. I'll add the class UK Visible Small on that button. I'll display this button group at the large size. And I'll display the button with the drop down at the medium width. Here's the button group at the large width. And just a note, this button group would not resize for me. It sort of popped out of the display. This row was initially set at seven and three. So I adjusted that to a six and a four. I'm not sure why the buttons didn't resize. Now at the medium width, I see the drop down button. and at the small, just the single button. The UIKit framework has made it easy to turn this design into a fully responsive page.